A little while back, I did a video called Gary Newman's Replicas, an album without chords, in which I uh, looked at specific musical features of the songs from the album. This time around, I'm going to look at the 1979 follow-up album, The Pleasure Principle. Now, like Replicas, The Pleasure Principle shares common characteristics, such as uh, songs created from synth-based riffs, um, uh, no use of chords, and narratives about technology in the future. Although on this album, Jess Lydiard was replaced by uh, Gary Newman's new drummer at the time, Cedric Sharpley. As a matter of fact, Cedric Sharpley was the drummer for the 1970s prog rock group, Druid. And Newman has brought in Chris Payne, who plays synthesizers and viola, and there's also an appearance by uh, Ultravox's Billy Curry. The album cover is based on a painting by Belgian surrealist painter René Magritte from a painting called The Pleasure Principle, a portrait of Edward James. By the time this album came out, Gary Newman was the king of New Wave. He had two UK number one singles within four months of each other, um, Our Friends Electric and Cars. So uh, at this time, Newman was riding high. Before we start, a few things to take note of is that there is this melodic motif that is consistent throughout the whole album. In a way, it's like Gary Newman's melodic calling card. He uses it a lot, and it's not restricted to this album. And it generally centers around the, the sus4 resolving to the third and then the root. You get this sound. So this particular motif appears in various incarnations throughout the album. So I just wanted to note that. And also there are no chords. Just like replicas, there are no chords. It's all riffs. So that melody is played over a, a D. Chordal implication is D major. And then C major. An interesting thing, Gardner is playing the melody in the bass, but he's sliding to the notes, sliding up and then down to the, the notes of the melody. So you get this. Metal starts with this octave riff that's played over three notes. So the root movement is E, C, A. are introduced by this uh, uh, drum roll on the snare, but it's going through a delayed flanger, so has an interesting kind of uh, effect. <laughs> then Gary Newman's vocal comes in. And that melody's played over the C. Obviously, the, there are no chords, but the chordal implication, which you can garner from the bass line and the vocal melody, is C major, A major, and E major. The Numa motif appears again. A 
little bit later on in the verse, there's this really cool uh, melodic uh, riff. It's kind of interjectory and it happens between the vocals or just underneath the vocals and it adds a really nice little color to it. So it's over the C major. It was played in the bass and in the synthesizer. at the same time. It's a nice little figure there. After the middle instrumental section, the verse comes back in. However, this time it's supported by synthesizers, uh, uh, sustained notes. There's one in the low register, in the middle, and then one really high up. It creates this kind of drone effect. Uh, it's a very dark sound, and it uh, continues throughout that verse. So it's building intensity as we, we get towards the end of the song. The third track on the album is Complex. Now, Complex was released as a single just after Cars. Um, and what I find remarkable about this, the fact that it was released as a single, is that um, Gary's, uh, Gary Newman's vocals don't come in until one minute and 30 seconds. The tune is only just over three minutes, so it takes a minute and a half before his vocals actually come in. This was quite a bodacious move because usually uh, pop songs, you know, uh, the, the vocals would come in sooner. The chord changes to this song are exactly the same as Air Lane. In Air Lane you had D major, down to C major, and then G major, down to F major. Yeah, I'm referring to chords that are not really there, but they're implied. So every time I mention a chord, it's implied, it's not actually played. Some of the notes in the melody are quite interesting, played against the bass note. For example, when we get to the... It's implying F major 7 there. It goes back to G. It goes to that... That's uh, D flat and C sharp note. That implies a, a G Lydian. G major. back to F major. Then after Cedric Sharpley's role, the band come in and play a melody. The melody's played by the viola and the synthesizer. That's repeated. And then it changes to G major, down to F major. As I mentioned earlier on, the chords are exactly the same as those from Air Lane. Films begins with this uh, low register sustained note in the polymoog and uh, Sharpley comes in with this drum roll and lays down this really nice groove with uh, Gardner coming in with the bass line. The synthesizers then enter and um, make the track at this point sound really full and there's this very dramatic melody. There. The melodies played over E and D root notes. It's played twice, and on the third and fourth times, the melody is reversed. As I mentioned in my last video on Gary Newman's replicas, uh, I really like Paul Gardner's playing. Uh, he plays some really nice little turnarounds, little figures here and there. And this, this track is another good example of that. Another 
thing I might add that um, Gardner uses a chorus pedal on his bass pretty much throughout the album. And the difference is this. This is me playing the bass line without a chorus effect. <laughs> Here you have a bit of a call and response. You have the main riff and then Gary Newman's vocals enter. And it goes to that really nice change. So it's in C and then the root note goes down to B flat. And this is implying C major because you've got the C in the root and Gary Newman's singing the fifth, third, and the root. And then it goes down to B flat. And he's singing an F to E natural, which gives you the B flat Lydian. Which is a beautiful sound. It goes back up to the C. To the second verse, this kind of synthesized pizzicato plucking sound comes in and plays a melody that's uh, just underneath the uh, lead vocals. After the second verse, it breaks into this beautiful ascending melody that's played in the synthesizer. So following the root movement of C to B flat, the root then goes to G. Synthesizer is outlining that major seven. One, five, major seven. And then B flat, one, five, major seven. So effectively, if it was a chord, it would be like this. This one has a great outro as well. They just get into the groove and jam out on that G. Meanwhile, you have that really high register uh, synthesizer playing. Um. I really like uh, the some of the roles that Sharpley plays. You know, he holds down the groove, but every now and then he does this little kind of skip on the snare drum. He just propels it forward. It's a, it's a fantastic outro. I really like it. Track starts with this very delicate piano arpeggio-like uh, motif. And it's essentially D major down to C major. And then the band come in quite dynamically. They come in with that uh, recurring um, uh, ostinato in the synthesizer. 
I think it's the synthesizer and the piano. And that keeps going and then the, the vocals come in. It's just a, a kind of unusual structure really. You have this intro and then one verse and then the outro. Um, when the verse comes in, when, when Newman's vocals come in, there's this uh, arpeggio-like figure in the uh, synthesizer. Of the D. And then it goes down to the C. So there's that anthemic, ostinato-like figure happening in the keyboards and the piano. And then the band stop and you have this really soft piano playing the same figure but uh, transposed with the uh, viola playing these really high, I think it's A to G. It's an observer that we get a little bit funky. Uh, Sharpley's let loose on this one. Uh, it's got a great groove and a really simple but effective riff. The main part and the harmonized part. You put them together, you get... Coupled with that uh, riff. At times it almost sounds like this came out of a jam, you know, it's, uh, they're definitely let loose. There's a little bit more flexibility in the way they interact, um, particularly uh, Sharpley and Gardner. And Gardner is, is, is plays some busy parts in there. There's one bit where he plays this really cool descending lick. He's playing the main part. <laughs> Conversation utilizes the Newman motif in uh, the vocal melody. It moves down to F. G and it has that really cute little melody in the high register there. I love that. <laughs> uh, there's a bit later on where there's the viola playing this ascending line just before that little motif.
One thing you notice about Newman's writing, there's a lot of this stuff is synth-based riffs, um, but they're outlining chords and they're outlining major chords mostly. I don't, I don't think there are any minor chords. Uh, there's no implication of a minor chord on this album. They're all majors. Um, so the bass line A, F, D, and obviously we're, we're sort of gathering information about what the chord could be from the vocal melody and the bass line. And, uh, so that's clearly implying A major. Track nine on the album is the world famous Cars. And the Numa motif appears again, and quite similar to Conversation, the previous track on the album. It's still revolving around that. In fact, it's in the same key. It's in the key of A. Everything, the synthesizer, so the riff in the synthesizer and the bass guitar are all coordinated. They're all playing the same thing as the vocals. I quite like that note in there, it goes, it's kind of a bluesy note, it's over the D. Almost momentarily implying the blues, because you get that sound. <laughs> Interesting. In the outro, you have the poly moog being used to its fullest, uh, the main sort of uh, high register melody. And then there's a low register uh, counter melody that's um, on the poly moog too, but is going through a flanger or a phaser, something like that, that's playing the, an ascending line. So, um, uh, it sort of improvises around that, um, those melodies there, and it's a great sound. That fa that sound that's going through a phaser, the polymoog going through the phaser, kind of very dark and sort of ethereal. Um, The album finishes with the track Engineers, and this has a really interesting uh, uh, rhythm to it. It's a sort of uh, hypnotic, robotic march. Uh, that's the, the best image I can conjure up, really. It's, uh, it does convey that kind of imagery, at least to me anyway. This kind of marching, constant, sort of consistent um, uh, rhythm you have there on the snare drum. It has all the kind of motifs again. It's like it's bringing the whole album together in this last track and just one more send off using a whole variation of the, the Newman motif. When the vocals come in, you have this melody. Synthesizers are doubling what Gary Newman is singing. And I love the outro as well. The, the, the melody plays it, it then goes down to F major, and then there's the melody, but there's another synthesizer that's laid, a very low register one. Sounds like it's going through a phaser too, and it creates this wonderful swell.
It's still a great album. I mean, it really has stood the test of time. It sounded great back in 1979 and it sounds great today. You know, it's one of, along with Replicas, it's one of Gary Newman's crowning achievements. An absolutely brilliant album. You know, if you break down the musical structure, it's very simple, you know. But obviously Gary Newman had the, the good taste to use um, the synthesizers in a really effective way and very resourceful, you know, using uh, synthesizers to create this kind of orchestral sound, you know. It's, um, and, and obviously this is the reason why there's no chords in there. He's it, smart enough to realize that oh, as soon as you start putting chords in there, you lose the essence of the synthesizers, the sound, the textures. I mentioned this a little bit in my Replicas video. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely up there. It's one of the greats. And um, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the rundown and it sort of uh, helped you to realize some of the things that you might not have noticed before. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.